Hey guys, y'all want to see how we went from a gasoline powered only to a dual fuel for under 250 bucks. I mean, you can't even buy this for less than 400 as a dual fuel. Stay tuned and look below the video for the links of everything that was used. And you guys go down there. Look at this link coming up right now. That's the buy me a coffee link, and I'm hoping somebody will give me a little love because this ain't cheap to teach you this much stuff. So let's get this thing here set up right quick, and we're going to show you what we turned it into. We'll get some little juice going here. All right, now, after this quick little shorty, let's get ourselves to how this was done real quick. Hey, everybody, I'm working on a DC power plant. Now, it's going to be designed to use uh, some pretty unique components so it's going to have a wind turbine controller that will shut the engine off when voltage reaches a battery bank preset charge. Uh, in my case, it's going to use either a 100 amp alternator, a 114 amp PMA. This is a permanent 14 magnet, permanent magnet alternator by Thermodyne, or it's going to be using this 800 watt PMA head, uh, which is the equivalent of a 67 amp alternator here so one of these will be used we still ain't figured it out i have a jack shaft that will be used because you can't run those at the rpms that an engine runs best at which in this case is going to be about 23 2700 rpms so it's going to have some slight gear reduction with some belts and um, just some bearings on a 5.8 shaft in the build and that might be the call this is a electric start and it is a basic 12 volt electrical start system. It does have circuit protection and it does have a, uh, a pretty simple layout. So we're working with a three quarter shaft, which in this case we'll be using a very small one and seven eighths on the output shaft right here. One of the things that we're working with is these different sizes. These are 16 millimeter, and this one here is 20 millimeter. Now, I did get a uh, special pulley for that one, and it's a pass-through shaft, so I could mount it either side, whatever's most convenient. So this one is probably going to be the one we're going to choose to use. This one would probably create so much damn heat, I couldn't keep it cool. And this one has just a better design for what the purpose is. And we might still go with the alternator. Um, all, uh, the, the cool thing about this is this is a Ford alternator. So it has the built-in regulator on it and the simple wire to um, energizing wire right there. And then the two wires, it's pretty simple. And the positive and, of course, the chassis ground. So fairly simple 100 amp alternator now we're not going to get 100 amps we're going to get 65 to 70 amps and in my case for my big battery bank um, if you've seen it in other pictures you'll realize that that's pretty good that's actually uh bad weather snow uh too many days of cloud cover not enough days of wind turbine power you name it instead of firing up a a gasoline generator which i've got a real cool one y'all go look at the previous video and I'll put a link to this thing. And any of the parts, any of the parts I'm working with, I'll put links. There, this and this one is specific. I want you to look here right quick, and I'll show you that. We'll get back right back to it. But in the previous video, this is a little um, inverter generator, 53 cc four cycle. It's freaking beautiful. My daughter got me that for Christmas, and it is a hell of a nice machine. About 280 bucks. You honestly can't beat this for that that kind of money. So uh, back over here, one of the things the carburetors, you must have the proper fuel shut off because you can run this on gasoline. I have no intention. This is going to be propane powered. And for it being seven horsepower, we'll get about 6.35 instead of seven, but, but we're only needing about five. So I'll put the links to everything I got. This one's different because of this. You want to see that right there? Trust me. 
when you're dealing with the Duramax engines, you want this. And a lot of the Honda engines, you want this. The link for it will be below the video. It is different. This one is the, has the ability to go either for natural gas or for LPG. Okay? So you could swap it either way, and it would work on either system. And it does have the manual drain down. You ain't got some screw you got to pull out. It, this is a lot better for no more different money. So um, this, gener this engine typically runs about 200 bucks. If you want a propane engine, um, they're going to run you 400 bucks. Or you can buy this. Um, go to the go to the link below. You'll buy this one here, and you'll get this one here for a couple hundred bucks, and you'll get this for about 25 bucks. And you're going to see. Or I'm going to set this phone up over here and let you see the steps of putting this all together. And it's really simple. Um, the way that these work. This is a primer purge in case you're changing bottles, and this will just hook up to gas, which we're using nothing more than the same tube you got here. You see this, the same thing, and I just cut off a salvage piece, and it fits very nicely on the end of this right here. So this is the little clean cover, so it is half OD, and it actually fits nicely and snugly inside of this with a set of hose clamps on it for security. That allows you to either put a valve, and then they make a valve that's, that's three-eighths flare, that has got three-eighths flare on each end of the valve, or you can just be like me. I'll just turn it off when not in use with this. They don't leak out, so when you're, when you're not running the engine, you can leave it hooked up. It's not going to hurt anything, and we're going to start with this here. And we're going to be using most all the original stuff, and it comes with a different, a few different choke arm options. Um, but we can also adapt the one that's internal in here now. So let me set this up, and all these people that's like, get a, <laughs> get a tripod, please. And that should effectively let you see what we got going on here. All right, so we're going to start with removing the air filter off of it. And we'll be taking off the carburetor, and of course, it's not complicated, so you want to get all your parts and keep them in a in-order location. Don't, uh, don't go goofing around too much. And then these are 10 millimeter that are on here, and of course, we will be using a few tools for removal of clamps. So I like to use these because when it comes to grabbing your clamps, these wire strippers do a better job of grabbing hose clamps off and as well as a angled pair as well as a 70 degree these aren't quite 90 degree a 70 degree angled pair of needle nose and a standard pair so these are basically all the tools you'll need and i'm just going to use this nice little impact and you can see a previous video i show you this little brushless one competes with a dewalt and holds its own very well for a lot less money so i kind of like it already it's quieter. So we're going to take the nuts off of the breather assembly and we will move these levers a little bit so that we can get it a little easier coming off. And you'll see that it has the air inlet here. You can just leave that just like it sits for now. And we'll take and save the gasket. Now I do have a whole set of gaskets over here that come with that carburetor so there's a ton of stuff that comes with this carburetor i mean it's just oodles of parts that you can get with it um, and it even comes with a little fuel line adapter it's just a mess of stuff that you can get in here and um, we probably won't need many of those because it looks like this is in pretty good shape now we're going to go ahead and pull the original choke lever off on that one and you'll notice that there's the style that comes with it, you see. So we'll pull that off of there. And then we're going to kind of work that off a little bit and pull that gas line off. And I prefer using these for that. And we'll work that gas line off. Now the next thing is we're going to take, and I'll use the other needle nose from that one. Because these things have poked the hell out of me too many times in the past. And I will spin that and get that. And that is for your governor so that you reduce the chance of surging. It takes the slack out of your governor. And you just want to spin this just like this. You see how I'm doing this? 
you just want to give that a little turn like that to straighten it up to allow that pin to come straight up on that arm. See that? And then your carburetor, your entire carburetor, will come off. Don't throw it away. These will work on just about any Harbor Freight Honda clone motor out there. And this is a pretty decent brand that comes with these. Um, it is the Huai, H -U -A -Y, uh Series 1 carburetor. And you'll notice that it has very nice very nice flowing function and it has replaceable parts it's not some kind of stamp crap so hold on to that don't get rid of that and you'll see the gasket back here is still where it's at and this kit can come with a number of different structural frame mount pieces you see that and we might have to use those so far i usually have not had to do this and we're now going to take the carburetor the new carburetor and we will slide it on. There's the existing gasket still back there. It'll slide back and we will put the fuel line on. Now you'll see the importance. Let me grab the other carburetor so you can see the importance. Okay, about 90% of the carburetors that you see that are the propane carburetors, they come with the fuel inlet straight. These are pressed in. You can get them out, but they'll never not leak if you mess with them. Okay, and they're only about that long. You see where that piece of hose was cut off on it. So this one worked fine, but we had to change it back over because we sold and we didn't want to sell it with a you know expensive part. So this one here is a straight one. It was being used on a champion tiller, and we ran a champion tiller, believe it or not, um, just on. You see these little adapters? I've got another video. Look, look at the very end of my videos, and I'll put a link to the video that explains these. You can use one pound bottles to run your tiller and you can park it at the end of the season and next year fire it right up. It will not, it will not go bad on you. The carburetor never gets fuel except for liquid gas, gaseous propane. It doesn't get liquids to, you know, get inside your bowl and plug it all up. So this works great. This is the adapter for the one pound bottles. And I just put two one pound bottles on my tiller and put two of these and, and it's just like magic. So all right, run a lot of stuff on propane that way. But you want the carburetor that I'm showing you here. It's got the turned up fuel. And the reason is, if you'll look, you'll see where the fuel line comes out over there. It goes through a, that little holder back here in the back. That's part of that little uh, frame. And you'll slide back, get it just back far enough where you can get your linkages in. And the same linkages will all pop into place. And you'll get your spring in. And now you got all that back together. You're going to slide it back a little ways. And you're going to slide that fuel line on as you work it back. The little fuel line is now on. And then what we'll do is we'll just grab the little clamp that goes with it. And we'll move that into place. And now you've reattached your gasoline option even though you might not have, like me, pretty much any intention whatsoever of using the gasoline option. So as you can see now, we have installed the carburetor already. It's that freaking simple. And I'm going to finish putting this together here. Now, the one thing about this breather assembly, let's see here, this part. The one thing about this is that you do have room. It is made... Um, for use with a different engine, you do have room to use this choke arm assembly location up here. Okay, so if you have any problems with the one that you have, you can use the same on it. Now, me personally, I'm just going to use the one that we had here. And you see here, there's the open and there's the choke closed. And just kind of work them a little bit because sometimes these have a little bit of burrs on them. Make sure it works good. All right, put it in the center, put your fuel in the center, and then you'll be able to work with this, getting this slid back on the end of the carburetor. And of course, we'll put the uh, original factory gasket back on it. Oops, upside down. Just like so. So now we're back in and we have the LPG carburetor. It's installed and we're just going to put the nuts back on. It's not very complicated. Hope y'all can see this really good. I'll turn it just a hair. 
and get the nuts back on it and uh, be prepared for uh, to fire this thing up on on propane. There's not much tuning to do to this. Um, these carburetors do come preset. You want to make sure you're secured. And then, of course, I'm going to grab a ratchet, which is, I'll tell you one thing, man. This is my favorite ratchet of every ratchet I own. It was some truck, truck stop kit that I bought years ago. And I ain't never gotten rid of it. The one thing about a propane carburetor, now I can feel that right about there. The one thing about a propane carburetor is air leak is not your friend. Okay, so you want to make sure that's all good. Make sure you're not bound up or pinched anywhere. Make sure you're clear of everything. Nothing's going to rub or touch. Make sure your throttle is still good. Make sure that your choke's still good. Make sure your fuel line, your fuel is still good. And you, as you'll notice, all your labeling still works the same. So right now we have the choke off and run position, the choke on and start position. All right, and then the next thing you're going to be grabbing is you're going to grab your hose. This piece of hose is nothing more than a standard piece of regulator hose from a regulator. So the same size, 3 8 flare, 3 8 flare there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two hose clamps on it, and I want to offset my hose clamps like so. So we'll make sure that you get extra clamping pressure. And because these engines, they vibrate, all, all mechanical things in that neighborhood do. So we'll get it fully made up on there. And then you will just snug them down. And I've already got the uh, little driver in this. I'm not going to try to just do a super snugging job on this. We'll tighten it up finally with a driver, a wrench, and put them together like so. And offset them a little bit from each other so that you've got real real good solid clamping power now I'll get down here with this and finalize that one and then you can hook up your gas now you will be using this purge valve right here to get rid of excess air that's going to be in the lines and we're just going to hook it up like so and I'll just grab a crescent wrench. Actually, I got one of them. Uh, I got one of them all in one wrenches, man. If they can do everything. All right, so I got one of these right here. This one here is one of them great neckers, and it's a, it's it's an, it's a, this is both standard and metric. I mean that now you'd pay a lot of money for one of these, wouldn't you? You, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna get over here, and we're gonna go ahead and do the snuggy dug on our on our lines here, where I'm gonna grab it and do a backup with these pump pliers and we will snug that thing up to where we pretty much don't have to worry about any large explosions i mean you know small fires they're, they're fine but it's them large explosions that really make my wife pissy so i try not to do those as much as possible now generally you'll 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 generally you'll turn on the gas down here at the bottle I got a little bottle see right, right there so generally you'll turn on the gas at that bottle and you'll do a little soapy check on it but what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick it on like so then we're gonna push on this I'm gonna get this camera back out of this here uh, superior holder I want to show y'all what I'm using here I mean man we talk in class but I'm talking, man, if I get any classier than this, they're going to invite me to the White House. Of course, I ain't a cross-dresser. They might not want me there. But this right here is your is your control valve for this, and you can listen. Listen here. You hear that? So you purge it a few times till you smell a little propane, and, of course, you want to let that kind of air out. Now, the next stage is, of course, get all your excess fun parts away. And you can put your breather back on if you like, which I typically think is a good idea because I'm I'm just kind of I'm just kind of into that stuff. So we're going to get this thing put back on, and we'll put the little gasket doodad back on there. And they are known as doodads if you looked that up. Um, we're going to get that 
put our air filter back on there seated nicely and then we'll put this cover on now the reason you want that is because you could get a flashback as this thing tries to tries to get itself fired up now we checklisted everything and maybe some things twice at least i did emotionally you know i was feeling it that's, that's what's important you gotta feel it right and then i'm going to go ahead and set my throttle all the way back down to nothing and pull it forward about one third of the way we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the choke and we're going to leak that engage we're going to leave the fuel switch off and then we're going to see if this baby will fire up make sure i got my gas there we go i turn it on some more you know if you don't got one amount of gas get more gas right let's try her out okay oops let's turn her on let's try her out Take it off. There we go. Now, we are running in the shop on propane. Now, wasn't that simple? Not too damn hard if you think about it. No adjustment needed. And it's a running motor. So, I hope that wasn't too damn loud. Was that too complicated? That was easy. So you're looking at roughly about uh, 225 plus another, I don't know, what, $15 for that. I'm sure you can look around at Grandma's old barbecue pit or you can go to the neighbor's house when he's sleeping and get you one of these. The parts are easy. This engine comes with, and be sure you put it like I did. I had to put oil in it. Um, be sure you get your oil in it. It comes with a little kit like so, and I don't know, some parts. Here we go. It comes with that like so, and now you have a propane-powered, and as you'll see here, look, the gas is off, see, and dry. I don't know if you can see down in that damn thing, but dry. No gas. Um, I don't really need that EGR, or I mean, not the EGR, but that EVAP system. I don't even need that. I can take the EVAP system off, and here's part of the EVAP system here. I can take all of that off. It's just not required. I can pull the gas tank off if I want to. It looks cooler with it. Look at that Duramax. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, that's hillbilly. I like, I like you. In fact, I could probably put some whiskey in that thing. You know what I mean? Just, just in case. I mean, wife won't find it there, right? All right, guys. Y'all be good. Go pick you this up. All the links to everything I can remember, at least, is down here. And you're going to be seeing a build on one of these as soon as I get uh, the proper parts. Things are not easy to get right now. So, uh, and this does have a six amp. Uh, 5.7 amp charging going backwards 5.7 so does fine works good you don't need but a 10 amp battery that's like 15 you know this is simple real simple all right you guys be good come back and see us don't forget oh yeah subscribe uh, stuff you know